In this video we look at the design and function of a three-speed gear hub for bicycles. The heart of the hub gear is the planetary gearbox. Before we look at how it works, let's take a closer look at the various components involved. The first thing you see from the outside is the hub shell, which is connected to the rear wheel by spokes. The sectional view shows the clutch housing, shown in dark green on the left, which is firmly screwed into the hub shell. You can also see the ring gear with internal toothing, shown in red, as part of the planetary gearbox. The carrier for the planet gears is shown in light green. When riding, the planet gears rotate around the fixed sun gear, shown in yellow, which is firmly mounted on the hub axle and connected to the bicycle frame. The hub axle, and therefore the sun gear, does not rotate while riding. Only the planet gears rotate around the fixed sun gear, which in turn rotates the carrier or the ring gear. A so-called overrunning clutch is realized on the carrier by means of ratchets. This overrunning clutch ensures that power can only be transmitted in one direction, allowing the hub to rotate freely in the opposite direction or to rotate faster than the carrier. When power is transmitted, the ratchets on the carrier engage in the recesses of the hub sleeve and drive it. The hub rotates and so does the rear wheel. If the carrier rotates more slowly than the rear wheel, or even stands still, for example when you are not pedaling, the hub can overrun the carrier without the pedals turning. With such a free wheel, the ratchets simply slide over the sawtooth profile. This also explains the typical rattling when the pedals are at rest and the wheels are turning. When pedaling again, the ratchets re-engage in the hub sleeve and enable power transmission. The ratchets are simply inserted into the recesses of the overrunning clutch and secured with a wire ring. This wire ring also acts as a spring that tries to lift the ratchets. This ensures that the ratchets engage immediately with the hub sleeve. Let us now take a look at the further structure of the hub gear. Inside the clutch housing, shown in dark green, is another overrunning clutch, shown in orange. This overrunning clutch is slidably connected to the ring gear by pins. This allows the overrunning clutch to move axially when shifting gears, while still remaining connected to the ring gear and allowing power to be transmitted. In the position shown, the overrunning clutch is inside the cylindrical part of the clutch housing and the ratchets do not engage. In this state, no power is transmitted from the overrunning clutch to the clutch housing and thus to the hub. This is the case in first gear, which we will discuss in more detail later. When shifting into second gear, the overrunning clutch moves out of the clutch housing and the ratchets engage in the recesses of the clutch housing, allowing power to be transmitted to the hub. Again, the ratchets allow the hub to overrun when the pedals are stationary. So note that the gear hub has two overrunning clutches, each of which provides the output depending on the chosen gear and at the same time enables freewheeling in the opposite direction. We will go into the individual shifting processes and the components involved in power transmission in more detail later. The overrunning clutch in the clutch housing is moved using the sliding clutch shown in turquoise. As the name suggests, this can be moved in an axial direction on the hub axle shown in yellow. A spring presses the orange-colored overrunning clutch against the front part of the sliding clutch and thus ensures that the overrunning clutch moves with the sliding clutch. The sliding clutch is moved by the shift pin shown in brown. This pin is guided in a slot and can move the sliding clutch into the various positions with the help of a spring. The shift pin is connected to a rod that passes through the hub axle. At the end of the rod is a pull chain, which is connected to a wire rope that leads to the shift lever. This lever is then used to move the pin into the different positions depending on the gear selected. The actual power transmission also takes place using the sliding clutch. The sprocket is first driven by the bicycle chain. The sprocket is firmly connected to the purple colored driver. As the driver rotates, it positively engages with the axially movable sliding clutch. Depending on the selected gear, the sliding clutch engages with the various components by means of the front teeth. In the case shown, this is third gear, where the sliding clutch engages with the carrier of the planetary gearbox. When shifting into second gear, the sliding clutch is retracted from the carrier and then engages with the ring gear. The orange overrunning clutch is then driven directly by the ring gear and the engaged ratchets transfer power to the clutch housing and then to the hub. The planetary gear is not actively involved in the power transmission in the second gear. When shifting into first gear, the sliding clutch is pulled further back and the ratchets retract into the green clutch housing. Power is no longer transmitted by the ratchets of the overrunning clutch, but by the ring gear in which the sliding clutch still engages. In this case, the planetary gear takes over the power transmission again.
Let's take a closer look at the individual gears and the components involved. As already explained, in all cases the copper-colored pinion drives the purple-colored driver, which transmits the torque to the sliding clutch. In first gear, this sliding clutch is fully pulled back and engages with the ring gear of the planetary gearbox. The ratchets of the orange overrunning clutch are completely retracted in the dark green clutch housing and do not participate in the power transmission. In this first gear, the ring gear drives the planet gears around the fixed sun gear. This results in an output through the carrier. The ratchets of the overrunning clutch mounted on the carrier then transmit the power directly to the hub sleeve. The hub rotates and so does the wheel. In this case, the carrier rotates more slowly than the ring gear, which is driven by the sprocket. This results in what is known as a power ratio, which increases torque but reduces speed, as is typical of first gear. The transmission ratio in first gear is determined by the ratio of the number of teeth on the sun gear and ring gear, as shown. In this case, the sun gear has 18 teeth and the ring gear has 48 teeth, giving a transmission ratio of 1.375 in first gear. Now let's take a closer look at the second gear. To shift into the second gear, the pull chain is loosened by the shift lever and the sliding clutch moves forward due to the spring force. This also causes the orange overrunning clutch to move out of the clutch housing. The ratchets attached to it now engage in the housing and drive the hub. The torque from the sprocket is therefore transmitted directly to the hub shell via the driver, the sliding clutch, the ring gear, the overrunning clutch, and the clutch housing. In this case, the planetary gear is bypassed and a direct drive with a transmission ratio of 1 is achieved in second gear. It should be noted that in second gear, the ring gear of the planetary gearbox is also driven by the sliding clutch, so the carrier rotates at the same time. However, the overrunning clutch allows the faster rotating hub to overrun the carrier and is therefore not actively involved in power transmission. Let's take a closer look at third gear. To shift into the third gear, the pull chain is released further by the shift lever and the sliding clutch is pushed forward again by the spring force. The orange overrunning clutch is already at the stop of the ring gear and does not move any further. This means that the sliding clutch is pushed further forward, disengaging from the ring gear and engaging with the green carrier of the planetary gearbox. So in third gear, the carrier is driven by the sprocket and drives the planet gears around the fixed sun gear. This drives the ring gear, which rotates at a higher speed than the carrier. The ring gear directly drives the orange overrunning clutch. The ratchets attached to it engage in the clutch housing from second gear onwards, transferring the torque to the hub and the rear wheel connected to it. From the perspective of the planetary gearbox, in third gear the input is provided by the carrier and the output by the faster rotating ring gear. This results in what is known as a speed ratio, which increases speed and reduces torque, as is usual in a higher gear. Compared to first gear, the input and output of the planetary gearbox are swapped in third gear, resulting in a reciprocal transmission ratio of 0.727. It should also be noted that in third gear, as in second gear, the carrier, which rotates more slowly than the ring gear, is outrun by the hub due to the overrunning clutch. <laughs>